This is an example of a linear decrease because every time you increase the x value by a given amount, you the y value decreases by the same amount. For example here, every time you go up by 1 in the x-axis, you go down by 2 in the y-axis. So it's decreasing by the same amount. Here, this is an example of exponential decrease. So here, every time you go up by the same amount, it decreases by the same factor. So we'll see it's going to decrease by the same factor. So how can we show this? For example, when you go from 0 to 15, it's decreased by a factor of 3.8 over 6, which is 0 0.63. When you go from 15 to 30, which is another increase by 15, the same amount, you've gone to 2.4 over 3.8, which is 0 0.63 as well. And then when you go from 15 to 45, that's 1.5 over 2.4, it decreased by the same factor again, 0 0.63. So you can see this is what exponential decreases. It decreases by the same factor for the same increase. It doesn't matter if, um, if I did what, if I go from up in 15s, I could go up in 10s, I can go up in 5s. It will have the same factor of decrease. The table shows how the current through a capacitor varies with time as it discharges. Explain how the data can be used in a graphical method to show the current decreases exponentially. So as you can see, as time increases, the current is also decreasing. We can use a numerical method like we did before to show that this is decreasing exponentially. So it should decrease by the same um, uh, factor as time increases by the same amount. But we've been asked to do a graphical method. So the tendency is to draw a, a graph of current against time, which gives something like this. But there's a problem with this graph. It gives a curve like that, which could be interpreted as 1 over t, an inverse relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be exponential decrease or even an inverse square. So using plotting that graph, the shape of that graph doesn't tell us anything. So we can't prove it's exponential decrease like that. So what we do is we need to look at the function for the current itself, which should be e to the minus t over rc. Now if we take logs from both sides, We get this and we're going to simplify and simplify further. We get this. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to compare that to the equation for line, which is y equals mx plus c. I'm writing it this way for, so it's easier to see. And on the y axis, I'm going to plot ln, whoop, that's not i, ln i. On the x-axis, I'm going to plot t. So it's a graph that looks like this. Of course, I'll need to work out ln i first by doing ln 3, which is 1.10. ln 2.10 gives me 0. 7, 4, and so on. If I plot this, I'll get a line that looks like this, and the gra uh, gradient of this line should be minus 1 of RC. You can see. The intercept of this line, the y-intercept, should be ln i naught. I've taken that data and I've used Excel to plot a, a line here with L and I against time. And you can see I'm getting a straight line with a gradient of minus 0 0.179 and a y-intercept of 1.4557. If a capacitor has a resistance of this much, I've been asked to work out the capacitance. So I need to use the gradient there. So the gradient is equal to minus 0. 179 and we also know the gradient is equal to minus 1 over rc from this 
Okay, so if I get rearrange this, I get RC equals 5.682. And then because R is 100, C is going to equal 0 0.005682 farads, which is 5.682 millifarads. Okay, to find the time at t equals 0, I need to use the y intercept. The y intercept is equal to 1.4557, which is also equal to ln i0. You can see from here. So to work out the i0, I need to do e to the power of 1.4557 which gives me 4.29 amps, which sounds about right.